Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Uh, today we'll read from a book titled Michael Snow, edited by Annette Michelson and Kenneth White and published by MIT Press in their October Files series. Kenneth White wrote, On the 14th of September 1970, Michael Snow, Pierre Abilus, Joyce Willand and Bernard Goussard planted a custom-made servomechanical monopod into an allegedly empty tract of Eastern Canada. To the monopod they attached a 16mm motion picture camera. They anchored the machines to the ground with a steel plate. They did so for the purpose of creating Snow's gigantic landscape film La Région Centrale, 1971. The film is widely recognized as a canonical achievement in the history of avant-garde cinema. Snow chose the site for its remoteness, its complete wilderness with nothing man-made visible. The film begins with the apparatus turning the camera in slow, smooth sweeps. A machinic vision scans the boulders, models scrub grass and blue skies. As the film proceeds into its third hour, the apparatus turns in rapid somersaults and figure eight patterns. Its movement crescendos and the images blur. The scene is atomized into a flicker of brown and blue, brown and blue. At speed, the images mutate from indifferent record to pulsating abstraction. The frame itself turns from mimetic container to aggressive matter, attaining a kind of shimmering substance in projection. Snow wanted the reality of these circular movements to come into dynamic competition with the landscape and the psychophysiological stability of the viewer. He drafted but did not submit an application for a British provisional patent for the apparatus, which he named the Camera Activating Machine. Considered apart and in tandem, the film and the Camera Activating Machine CAM, offer an as yet unconsidered and complex case through which to understand the media cultures of the Cold War. Snow, Abilus, Wieland, Goussard and the technological monster, to use Amos Vogel's appellation, were not alone on the frozen tundra of Canada, 650 kilometers north of Quebec City. Nearby, a decidedly more sophisticated kind of technological monster was in operation. Canadian Forces Station CFS Moisy, also known as Pine Tree Line Radar Station Moisy C-33, was part of the first air defense radar network built by the US and Canadian governments. CFS Moisy was located in the village of Moisy, population 988, in 1971. The village occupied a narrow horn of land in the subarctic North Shore region of Quebec, where the Moisy River meets the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Moisy was 22 kilometers east of Septil, one of the northernmost cities in Canada. Snow and Willen met Abilos and Goussard at Septil's small airport set between the city and the radar station. From there, Snow chartered a helicopter to take the group, like a surveying party he wrote in his production notes, to the site at which they planted the cam and camped for five days, from September the 14th to September the 20th, 1970. While Snow and Abilus were familiar with the distant early warning DEW line widely advertised by the American and Canadian Air Forces and their contractors, Snow and Abilus claimed to have been unaware of the Moisy station. Their helicopter, however, would have needed permission from CFS Moisy before entering the station's airspace. Their position was approximately 50 kilometers from CFS Moisy. In the meeting of the CAM and radar station, a project of radical aspiration crossed the overdetermined close world of Cold War defense infrastructure. The allegedly empty landscape of northern Quebec was the site of grave competition. 
The calm demands we consider it and the gigantic landscape film it recorded in the context of another kind of survey of North American terrain conducted by international military forces. Each base, Snow's term, nurtured scanning systems with similar engineering based on a system of servo mechanisms, one produced by institutions of international defense, the other by artists engineers. While each employed machines for ostensibly different purposes, each nevertheless reckoned with similar anxieties of perception. In a kind of kinetic synchronicity, the two systems strove to realize a vision beyond their technological capabilities. CFS Moisi, conceived uh, to aid in the detection, identification, interception and destruction of Soviet bombers and their nuclear weapons, the CAM, imagined by Snow and built by Abelos, designed to make a film by which to challenge a viewer's psychophysiological limits in a cinematic situation. The creators of the CAM and CFS Moisi relied on similar terms to describe their aspirations. Each, in its own way, sought to produce, by means of automatic control, an absolute record of a piece of wilderness. In a crucial study on the interrelation of landscape and power, W.J.T. Mitchell writes Landscape might be seen more profitably as something like the dream work of imperialism, unfolding its own movement in time and space from a central point of origin, unfolding back on itself to disclose images of unresolved ambivalence and unsuppressed uh, resistance. Snow first devised the operational intent of the camera activating machine in 1964, contemporaneous with his other camera movement films, Wavelength, 1967, and Back and Forth, 1969. In La Région Centrale, he sought to move a camera freely in every direction and on every plane of a sphere. In his preliminary search for a machine that might fulfill this mission, Snow looked to surveillance devices. But to fulfill these complex actions, a custom-made apparatus was required. Snow was asking for something that did not exist. Abilus required a year to complete the cam. Weighting 180 kilograms, the cam consists of a complex system of servo mechanisms, also known as feedback amplifiers, for the propulsion of the motion picture camera and its counterweights. The CAM's infrastructure was derived in part from World War II-era anti-aircraft technologies selected from military surplus resellers. Abelos built on the engineering of air defense precision ranging panels, also called strike panels. Precision ranging system is used to calculate the flight path of a hostile aircraft and coordinate responsive fire. A radar unit and a computer determine the position of the target and its anticipated future position, to which a weapon is directed by means of automated servo mechanisms. For the CAM, Abelos modified this configuration into an inward detected close system. The CAM's directing computer was responsive to alteration of its power source, the input of electromotive force from an arrangement of six 6 volt batteries and a backup gasoline generator. Horizontal, vertical and rotational movements and the camera's zoom and motor were controlled by a regulator, the control box. The range of motion, free spherical actions around the central point was enabled by rotary connections comprised of 24 slip rings and epicyclic gearing, so-called satellite gear boxes assembled by Abelus. Its purpose by design was movement alone, velocity was its mission. Abelus transformed a camera into a new machine that moves like a ranging system. The emphasis here is not on vision, but on movement, speed and the shared capacity for kinetic operations. The aim for the CAM is not so much to see like a radar, but to move like one. 
and the fact that a significant portion of the film is out of focus underscores a tension between the declared aspiration for enhanced vision and the material conditions of production. After inputting a series of actions via the control box, Snow allowed the cam to determine its own trajectory, a contrived semi-automatic pilot. I only looked in the camera once, he claimed. The film was made by the planning and by the machinery itself. The particular models of the precision ranging systems from which Abilus derived inspiration were long obsolete by the time of his contract with Snow in 1969, but they were the direct precedents to the equipment of the air defense radar systems, including those in use at CFS Moisi. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.